Hey guys, what's going on? This is Panstar Dragon, and today we'll be doing the top 10 best junglers for solo queue as of patch 5.8. In this video, we'll actually be featuring runes and masteries for the first time, so do check that out. And the last time I did this was in patch 5.5 or patch 5.6, I'm not sure. And there are a few things that have changed since then. And of course, a little few junglers are popping out with new builds and stuff like that, while also feeling like some champions are actually stronger than other champions as of the last tier list. And of course, some people have been nerfed, some people have been buffed, so that means we have to do new tier list. And with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, so number 10 is going to be Lee Sin. Personally, I don't like him, but a lot of people will say he is a good jungler, and I do know for a fact that he is a good jungler, but of course, I'm not that great with him. And at the same time, I do feel like there are more powerful junglers than him. Of course, a good Lee Sin always proves me wrong in some scenarios, but thank god he's not like super god tier, so I don't have to learn him, because he's kind of hard to play. And so, what do I not like about him? Well, he kind of falls off in the late game. He's definitely outscaled by most junglers in this game. But what does he bring to the table? Well, of course, his early game is super strong, so if you can snowball that lead and keep that lead, you're going to win the game. And also, he's also a fairly strong duelist because he has a lot of base damage, he has a lot of gap closes to chase you down, and so he's pretty good in the early game and mid game. But I will stick with my opinion, I do feel like there are better champions than him right now. Next at number 9 is going to be Evelyn. So Evelyn is a very interesting champion right now. I think people right now are just going to be building Cinderhawk and going pure tank on her and then just like getting that early game pressure and killing people with her stealth. And Cinderhawk is pretty good with her since she's usually in melee range as she needs to use her hate spike for damage and of course her W lets her stick to people so it's pretty good. And you know she did receive a bunch of minor buffs to her in like the last few patches so it might add up to leading her that she's actually a viral pick in the jungle now. And again, her best trait is that she cannot be detected by sight wards, only deep wards in her jungle to get an idea of where she's going to be at. Although there are a few things that I don't like about her. First of all, she doesn't have any sustain and she kind of falls off like it. But that's about it. Next up is going to be Vi for Vendetta. So Vi in the jungle is still strong. Her early game isn't nerfed that much except for her ultimate damage from a previous patch. But again, it's only used to gap close and of course lock someone down. So it's going to still do its job. Her early game is still strong, she has her Q to CC people and of course do a bunch of burst damage. And she's also really good at 1v1ing one people. Now when it comes to teamfights, she's still going to get her job done, lock down the enemy squishies and take them out quickly with someone else. And she can still make picks around the map, you know, with their ultimate and Q. And in this tank meta where a bunch of people will have health, her W is going to be really strong. Along with the armor shred from it too. What I don't like about her is that they nerfed her a few times, whatever, and sometimes if she's squishy and doesn't have enough items, she can be bursted down when she ults onto someone. She also has no innate sustain, but has backed up from the shield coming for a passive. Next up is going to be Skarner. So I had him in one of my first few tier lists when Cinderhall came out, and then I removed him ever since then, because I didn't really see anyone else playing him, so I just assumed that he was meh. But I honestly think with Righteous Glory and Cinderhawk being in his item build, I do feel like that he's a really strong jungler, especially for making picks or initiating in teamfights. He does have a slow start because he can't really gank unless he's like level 6 and has his ultimate. I mean, don't get me wrong, he can, but the enemy has to be pushed up because he needs to stack his Q and of course his passive. And of course in teamfights, how does he do? Well, he's got his Q to do a lot of sustain damage, he does bring a lot of CC with his E, R, and passive, and he also has a shield coming from his W, which is actually quite strong. And yeah, that's basically it. I do feel like he's unpopular for whatever reason, maybe people feel like there's better junglers, but honestly, I do feel like he's better than most junglers in this current meta we have. Alright, number 6 is gonna be Zac. So Zack is still good, he offers a bit more CC with his E, and his ultimate is really good for chasing people down and of course knocking enemies back to your team. And he's also pretty unkillable because of his passive, just regaining health and of course splitting up into 4 chunks so the enemy has to focus your team or you. Now in my last tier, I actually ranked him around number 4. But I feel like he's not as strong as I thought, and there are two reasons why. First of all, if he doesn't land an E in a team fight or maybe initiating, it's going to hurt him a lot because that is one of his main skills that he has to land or else he's going to miss a huge chunk of his CC and damage. And second, he doesn't have a lot of damage in his kit because all of his cooldowns are actually high except for his W. But other than that, he's unkillable once he's really fed. He has a lot of sustain so he doesn't really have to buy potions and his clears only get stronger once he gets some levels. One tip for solo key when playing Zac is of course you do need a team to kind of kite around you since you are very tanky 
and you gotta soak all that damage for your team. Otherwise, usually whatever, otherwise usually whatever happens after team fights is that you'll probably be the last one surviving, and your whole team is dead. So it's kind of team reliant since you don't have much damage. Next up is gonna be Nidalee, and I haven't actually talked about her since she got her health nerf, and I do want to be talking about that nerf a bit. So basically what happens is she's not as strong as a duelist as she was before because obviously she'll be at a much lower health pool. But as Nidalee, if you're actually going to duel someone, you're usually going in for the kill and going into that cougar form, otherwise you probably will just poke him with your Q and then kind of be like, hmm, I don't think I should go in. And that's basically the only time that health nerf actually hits. Or basically whenever she's in cougar mode. And usually when she's going in cougar mode, she's probably going in for the kill in a team fight or whatever is probably won by then. So yeah, she's still pretty strong, she's got her Q poking the enemy until they're chunked down then she can assassinate them. And of course she does have her E to sustain herself or her team, so that's another source of health that she's going to be getting. And yeah, it seems like she's still pretty good. Even with all these things building magic just or whatever to block her Qs, I still think she can snowball the early and mid game and of course, come out on top. Next up is Rek'Sai, the champion I always feel like who is a guy but is actually a girl. Alright, so Rek'Sai's Q got nerfed by like 0.1 AD ratio or like 0.3 in total, and as she levels her E, she can reuse the tunnels more often, which is a little buff, but not as big as the Q nerf. But that doesn't matter, I think people are stopping the build Warrior on her and starting to get Cinder Hulk, since she goes full tank anyways, and her base damage is actually still pretty strong, and she has that amazing great peel from her W to, you know, catch people or peel for her team. But the most OP thing about her, I feel, is the sustain coming from her passive in team fights. That thing can heal for a lot of hit point when she gets full charges on it. Pretty sure it heals around 450 hit point at level 18. And it's actually pretty easy to build Fury. So as long as she has that, having the burrow to peel or initiate onto the enemy team, having her tunnels for even faster clears, and her Q to make her do sustain damage, I still think she's going to be really good. Simply, there are better junglers right now than her, I feel. And I'm going to be telling you who the top 3 are. So at number 3 we do have Sejuani. I do feel like she's a little overhyped and like you know she does have a really high ban rate and there are some junglers who I do feel like are more powerful than her and you'll find out sooner enough but let's talk about the pros of Sejuani. So goddamn, she skills with health and the more health you build the more damage you get that's really good and she has amazing CC with her EQ and R and she can create a really good team fight or picks with her ultimate since it does lock down people for a good amount of time. And as she gains levels in her ultimate, it only gets better. I also feel like she's also really good for carrying your team in solo queue because if she needs to do more damage, she can buy Leandries and that's really good on her. I build it usually when I'm like 3 kills ahead of my health team or whatever. So it does help. And she's really good at making picks because she can use her Q to gap close onto somebody and then throw a bola on somebody to lock him down. And then her team can follow up and kill that person. The only big con she has is that, you know, if you do miss that Ebola, then you won't slow a lot of people. In fact, it's going to be a useless ultimate. Unless she has the Andres, and also she does have kind of a slow start. But at least she's not a level 6 jungler, like Skarner. She can actually gank fairly well pre-6. And at number 2, we do have Fat Bastard. So why do I feel like he's better than Sejuani? Okay, so first of all, he's like a god tier early game jungler because he has a lot of base damage in his kit, all of his spells do damage and of course have hard CC except for his W, and he has a lot of sustain because of his passive and his W taking reduced damage from the enemies. So he can pressure the early game just as good as say someone like Lee Sin, but on top of that, he can be a tank jungler since he is a really good user of the Cinder Hulk, and his W does actually a lot of damage, and his ganks are super powerful. A gap closer which also knocks up them, um, damage, and he has a slow coming from his Q, and if he needs more than that, he's going to use his ultimate to throw them back to his team. In team fights, he's really tanky so he's hard to take down, and his ultimate can be used for initiating of course, or cutting the enemy's formation in half and making it a 2v5 for like 1 or 2 seconds. Or of course disengaging, there's many uses of it which makes it a great skill. The only con I can really think about Gragas is that he's pretty skill shot reliant, and I'm actually really bad with his ultimate. But if you actually know how to use his ultimate properly in situations, you're going to be a really good Gragas and you can actually carry your team with just that ultimate and of course just being Gragas. And at number 1 is going to be Nunu. Alright, so I love picking this guy in solo queue. Why? Because he's so easy to play. I don't really have to do anything. I just let my team carry me, aka Blood Boil on my AD carry. I Ice Blast anyone who's going near him, and I use my ultimate to zone off enemies or of course catch them and slow them down. So not much mechanical play right there. But let's talk about why I think he's really good. So the biggest reason I feel Nunu is really strong in the current meta is because of the Cinder Hulk item. It gives him a free Sunfire kit. 
And what was Nunu's problem before, it was that he couldn't clear the small camps fast enough, but with the Sunfire doing most of the work, well, he just has to concentrate on taking out that big minion, which is easy for him because he can consume it. Also, he can buy skirmishers to, you know, kill people and do some damage since he can lock them down with Ice Blast and the only other damage source he has is his ultimate and his auto attack. I know I don't have skirmishers in this clip, but trust me, it's definitely better than Trailblazer. I actually used it in the game when... I actually used it in the game where I got the challenger, so... Yeah, trust me. He that. is, of course, really good at sticking with people since he has the constant Ice Blast to slow them down and then he can just run up to them with Blood Boil and auto attack them. And yeah, he's probably one of the greatest scaling tanks in the jungle just because he gives his AD carry a lot of buffs and heals for them really good. But again, biggest reason why he's so good is because of Cinderhulk, he has AoE clears, and he now can take out the camps fairly fast. Alright, next up let's do some honorable mentions and first up we do have Big Daddy. So I do know that he's being played in a support role, but I still like him in the jungle. Skirmisher is pretty good on him because he can lock down someone for a long time and get those auto attacks to do that true damage. Next up is Sparta, and Sparta, really good at level 6 because he can easily get kills on that bot lane giving you a double kill. Also does a lot of damage early game and mid game once he gets a Brutalizer and Warrior. And maybe the Black Cleaver is good on him, but I feel like maybe going Brutalizer and then Last Whisperer is the better build. Do do do, it's gonna be Shaco, and what's good about him? Hmm, hmm I guess being really annoying, but uh, yeah, just being really annoying. Next up is Uterus, and he's really good in the mid game and late game scaling because his Phoenix Stance plus the Cinderhawk will make him do a lot of damage. But he is so useless in the early game, all he does is farm, and if he does kind of go into a gank 2v2, well, he's not going to be doing that much. Next up is going to be Kha'Zix. So, there's this person named Diamond1 Kha'Zix. He spams Kha'Zix. Actually, I think he has like 386 games with Kha'Zix, and only the other one being one with Rengar. And obviously, if he hit rank 29 just playing Kha'Zix in the jungle, then it actually means that Kha'Zix actually still does well in the meta. Plus, Kha'Zix got a buff to his double where he heals more of this patch. So, he might be good right now. But maybe he's just really good at Kha'Zix, who knows. Next up is going to be Cinder Hulk Lu Bu. Hmm, I, I mean, the armor nerf, I really don't like that. But I can see him being good with the Cinder Hulk because he can use his ultimate to trap someone down. And then he's just basically spreading that Sunfire all over his enemies. Next up is going to be Rengar, and again, there's so many Rengar mains in like Challenger and Master. You obviously see them having high KDAs and like killing people and killing the squishies and basically winning the team fights off that. And it can get pretty annoying if you're at AD carry or whatever, but yeah, they have really high KDAs. And I feel like if you know how to play Rengar in the jungle, you can easily carry your team to victory. Next up is going to be upcoming champions that might be good in the future, but I'm not sure. But we'll actually have to see if people start playing these champions. And so first up is going to be Shen. So his ultimate did get a buff where they reduced the cooldown on it, which of course can give him really good counter ganks if needed. And Cinderhawk, it helps him because he gets AoE clears now, and he does scale with health on his passive. Next up is going to be Xin Zhao. Watch out, the Black Cleaver is really strong on him, gives him cooldown reduction, health, and attack damage. So he could be a pretty decent jungler with this, but I still feel like there's a lot more stronger junglers than him. Hey guys, so thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy this video, maybe you'll enjoy other tiers right up there. It's going to be top laners and mid laners and AD carries all for patch 5.8. And of course, they're all going to be available as of now because I'm done all of these videos. So thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. A little sexual frustration Combined with lack of motivation And a loss of concentration I got a strange disease I can't concentrate on work My libido's gone berserk Now I'm sweating through my shirt I got a strange disease